Details about the Tree of Life that many don't know. New Location Exposed In the Bible, the Tree of Life first appears in the book of Genesis. It is a special tree that God placed in the Garden of Eden. And out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the Tree of Life also in the midst of the Garden, and the Tree of Knowledge of the Difference Between Good and Evil. Genesis chapter 2 verse 9 In the Garden of Eden there are two trees with names, the Tree of Life and the Tree of Knowledge of Good and Evil. Because of this difference, it stands out as being important to God's plan and the spiritual story of the Bible. The Tree of Life stands for God's gift of endless life and food that never runs out. In a spiritual sense, it stands for the food that comes from being close to God. One way to look at this tree is as a physical representation of the full, rich, and endless life that God wants for all people. Imagine being able to reach a tree that not only gives you tasty fruit, but also promises that God will take care of you forever. The Fall of Man, Loss of Access When Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they broke God's rules. They lost their special way to get to the tree of life because of this. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit knowing how to distinguish between good and evil. And now he might stretch out his hand and take from the tree of life as well and eat its fruit and live in this fallen sinful condition forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent Adam away from the Garden of Eden to till and cultivate the ground from which he was taken. So God drove the man out and at the east of the Garden of Eden, he permanently stationed the cherubim and the sword with the flashing blade which turned round and round in every direction to protect and guard the way, access, to the tree of life. Genesis chapter 3 verses 22 through 24 Amplified Bible Because they didn't follow the rules, humans were exposed to death and pain. This act of disobedience changed the way people live forever, bringing sin into the world and ending the perfect bond between God and people. This also meant that the perfect, unbroken relationship with God was over. The disobedience had big effects that went beyond Adam and Eve and affected all of their children and grandchildren. Being kicked out of Eden and then having the cherubim watch over the tree of life are both images of how sin separates people from God. It shows that people can't earn eternal life or the close relationship with God that Adam and Eve had. This loss set the stage for God's plan to save the world, which is told in the Bible. The tree of life was watched over by cherubim, which are angels, each with a sword that was on fire. In the Bible, the cherubim are often shown as guards of holy places. This shows how holy God is and how he protects his holy domain. This act proved that people can't get to endless life on their own. Additionally, it emphasized how bad sin is and how people need God's help to get back to eternal life. The cherubim and the sword in flames also serve as a reminder of how fair God is and how he doesn't accept sin. The story shows that God is loving and merciful, but he is also holy and pure, so sin can't be with him. This imagery supports the idea that forgiveness and purification are needed to enter endless life and get back in touch with God. The Tree of Life and Jesus Christ According to biblical understanding, the Tree of Life is often seen as a metaphor for Jesus Christ. For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave his one and only begotten Son so that whoever believes and trusts in him as Savior shall not perish but have eternal life. John chapter 3 verse 16 Amplified Bible Christ purchased our freedom and redeemed us from the curse of the law and its condemnation by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs crucified on a tree cross. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 Amplified Bible 
Jesus' death on the cross was the best way to show love and save the world. His death fixed the broken connection between God and people, making a way for us as believers to reach eternal life. There is a strong picture of this restoration in the cross, which is called a tree in the New Testament. Jesus made it possible for us as Christians to get to the tree of life again by dying and rising from the dead. You can't get here by working hard. You have to believe in Christ and what he did on the cross. In the Bible, Jesus' place as the link between God and people is very important. He is called the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said to him, I am the only way to God and the real truth and the real life. No one comes to the Father but through me. John chapter 14, verse 6. Implications of the Tree of Life for Believers As Christians, we see the Tree of Life as a sign of His love and the promise of endless life. It tells them to live in a way that pleases God and shows others His love. We are inspired to grow closer to God and live in a way that serves Him when we think about what Jesus did. Every one of us who believe in God are encouraged to stay true to our faith because we know that we will spend eternity with God. A very important part of our Christian faith is this permanent inheritance. It gives us hope and peace of mind that, despite the hard things that happen in this life, we will be happy and at peace with God forever. People who believe are called to share this word of hope with others and invite them to join the eternal life that Jesus Christ offers. From Genesis to Revelation, the Tree of Life tells the story of the Bible as a whole. God's desire to have a connection with people, the effects of sin and His plan to save and restore. Understanding this theme helps us understand how much God loves us and how important Jesus' death was. In the New Testament, Jesus is often seen as the fulfillment of the Tree of Life. This concept is crucial because it ties the Old Testament imagery of life and eternal sustenance directly to Jesus' mission and purpose. He offers eternal life to all who believe in Him. The thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. John chapter 10 verse 10, Amplified Bible. Jesus, on the other hand, brings plenty of life, which is similar to how the tree of life gives life. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in, adheres to, trusts in, relies on me as Savior, will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me as Savior will never die. Do you believe this? John chapter 11 verses 25 and 26 Amplified Bible these lines stress that Jesus is the way to eternal life and spiritual happiness. We are given eternal life if we believe in Him. The promise of endless life shown by the tree of life is directly linked to what Jesus said about Himself as the resurrection and the life. His resurrection shows that He has power over death and gives us real hope for future life. Jesus often used metaphors to teach spiritual truths. One of his famous metaphors is the true vine. This metaphor enriches our understanding of how Jesus sustains us spiritually. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that continues to bear fruit, he repeatedly prunes so that it will bear more fruit, even richer and finer fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have given you, the teachings which I have discussed with you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you, just as no branch can bear fruit by itself without remaining in the vine, neither can you bear fruit, producing evidence of your faith, unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit, for otherwise, apart from me, that is cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. John chapter 15 verses 1 through 5 Amplified Bible 
This metaphor shows how important it is to stay connected to Jesus for spiritual health and growth, just like branches need to stay connected to the vine in order to give fruit. It shows that a constant ongoing connection with Christ is necessary for spiritual growth and productivity. This connection makes sure that we grow spiritual fruit that shows their faith and how God has worked in their lives. The Apostle Paul also highlights the significance of Jesus as the source of life. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Colossians chapter 3 verse 4 Amplified Bible Paul says over and over that Christ is the believer's life, which supports the idea that Jesus is the only way to find real life, both now and then. Paul talks about the death of Jesus a lot in the terms of the tree of life. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you had put to death by hanging him on a cross. In this case, the cross is called a tree to show that Jesus brings healing and new life. This link reinforces the idea that Jesus' death on the cross, the tree, was a turning point that made it possible for people to live forever just like the tree of life gives life. The Book of Revelation The tree of life shows up again in the Book of Revelation, which means endless reward and spiritual food. The images used in Genesis come full circle in this last book of the Bible, which shows God's plan for eternal life and healing. Blessed, happy, prosperous to be admired are those who wash their robes in the blood of Christ by believing and trusting in him, the righteous, who do his commandments, so that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter by the gates into the city. Revelation chapter 22 verse 14, Amplified Bible. In this verse, the blessed state of those who have accepted Christ's sacrifice and follow his rules is shown. They are able to reach the tree of life, which stands for endless life and being close to God. Like newborn babies, you should long for the pure milk of the word, so that by it you may be nurtured and grow in respect to salvation, its ultimate fulfillment, if in fact you have already tasted the goodness and gracious kindness of the Lord. 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 2 through 3 Amplified Bible. These texts show that following Jesus will lead to eternal life and spiritual happiness. In Revelation, the tree of life not only stands for eternal life, but also for the ultimate healing and restoration of all countries. This shows God's big plan for people. Jesus and the Tree of Life Today For Christians, Jesus' place as the realization of the tree of life is very important. People who follow him can get eternal life and spiritual nourishment through his lessons, life, and death on the cross. We receive spiritual nourishment and the hope of eternal life through his death and resurrection. We are encouraged to stay true to God and grow in our relationship with him because we know that our only hope in life is in Christ. Throughout the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, the tree of life is used to emphasize the message that God wants to give us endless life and fix the broken relationship between him and us as a people. This consistency in the Bible shows how important Jesus' mission was and how it gives us hope. As Christians, we think about these truths because they remind us of how much Jesus loved and sacrificed for us. This makes us want to live lives that show his kindness and truth. The tree of life is more than just a tree. It represents the heart of God's gift of endless life, which is finally realized in Jesus Christ. This understanding makes our faith journey richer by helping us understand the Bible story and God's plan to save the world better. The fullness of life that Christ offers is experienced by those who abide in Him. We also look forward to the eternal life that will be guaranteed in the new heaven and new earth. The Tree of Life in Revelation The Tree of Life as Restoration the tree of life is a symbol of full healing in the book of Revelation. This healing isn't just a return to the way things were when people lived in Eden, 
It's also a rise to a better life with God. The Bible says, He who has an ear, let him hear and heed what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes the world through believing that Jesus is the Son of God, I will grant the privilege to eat the fruit from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Revelation chapter 2, verse 7, Amplified Bible. This promise to the overcomers shows what will happen if you stay true to your faith. The tree in the New Jerusalem is talked about in Revelation 22. On either side of the river was the tree of life, bearing twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Revelation chapter 22, verse 2, Amplified Bible. These verses show that the tree of life is a source of healing for all time and the end of God's plan to save the world. Each of the twelve types of fruit represents how fully and perfectly God provides for all of our needs and makes healing possible for everyone. This picture of the tree of life shows how God wants to fix and heal the world's problems in the end. The New Jerusalem the New Jerusalem is depicted as a place of continuous provision from God. It is a city where God's presence is fully realized, and His people experience unending peace and joy. Then the angel showed me a river of the water of life, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb, Christ, in the middle of its street. Revelation chapter 22, verse 1, Amplified Bible. This stresses plenty, continuity, and how God always provides for His people. The crystal clear river stands for cleanliness and the life-giving Spirit of God. The fact that the tree of life next to the river is always bearing fruit shows that God's gifts and provision for His people will never end. Healing and Reconciliation The tree of life also stands for the end of pain and conflict. As long as God is in charge, it means that everything will be healed and made right. Picture a place where there is no more pain and everyone gets along. And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there will no longer be death. There will no longer be sorrow and anguish or crying or pain, for the former order of things has passed away. Revelation chapter 21 verse 4 Amplified Bible This promise is about a time in the future when all of life's problems will be solved. In this case, the tree of life stands for the peace and joy that we will have forever. It shows that God wants to get rid of all kinds of pain and make everything in His world work together perfectly again. Eternal Relationship People who believe will have a relationship with God forever in the New Jerusalem. This friendship will be marked by being able to talk to Him directly without sin or death getting in the way. There will no longer exist anything that is cursed because sin and illness and death are gone and the throne of God and the Lamb will be in it and His bond servants will serve and worship Him with great awe and joy and loving and devotion. They will be privileged to see His face and His name will be on their foreheads. Revelation chapter 22 verse 3 through 4 Amplified Bible this shows the final reward for being faithful and how perfect God's relationship with His people is. Seeing God's face and having His name written on their foreheads mean they know God and belong to Him deeply. It stands for the promise of eternal life and perfect union with God, which was lost in Eden but found again in the New Jerusalem. Source of Hope As Christians, the Tree of Life represents hope. It gives us hope for a better future with God, where everything is made new. To him who overcomes the world through believing that Jesus is the Son of God, I will grant the privilege to eat the fruit from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Revelation chapter 2 verse 7 Amplified Bible From the loss in Genesis to the complete renewal in Revelation, this idea of making things right keeps coming up. The tree of life shows that we have hope and confidence because we know that Jesus will win over sin and death and make everything right again. In Revelation, 
The tree of life stands for God's plan to save the world, his wisdom, his righteousness, and his promise of endless life. It tells the whole story of the Bible, from the beginning and end of the world to salvation and restoration. It tells us to stay true to God and have hope, looking forward to the final healing and the life we will live with God forever. The Tree of Life is a powerful reminder of how much God loves us and how committed He is to being with us forever. It assures us that He will always provide for us and that we will enjoy being with Him forever. When we think about the Tree of Life, it reminds them of the wonderful future that lies ahead and encourages them to keep their faith, knowing that God's promises are true and His plan for healing is perfect. This strong imagery gives us inspiration and hope all the time and it reinforces the main message of our faith as Christians, that through Jesus Christ we have been given endless life and a relationship with our Creator that will never end. In the Bible, the Tree of Life's appearance at both the start and end of the Bible shows how important it is to God's plan for people. It's often a metaphor for people's connection with God, their search for righteousness, and their search for wisdom. The story of creation, fall, salvation, and restoration is linked by this tree, which shows up over and over again. Its long-lasting presence shows that God's plan for the world and His dedication to people's well-being have not changed. Wisdom and Righteousness In the book of Proverbs, wisdom is described as a tree of life. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy, blessed, considered fortunate to be admired is everyone who holds her tightly. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 18, Amplified Bible this verse talks about how important wisdom is and how it can save your life. Wisdom, who appears as a woman, not only gives advice on how to live, but also spiritual food and satisfaction. Seeing the tree of life helps us understand that being wise will lead to a happy, successful life, just like the tree of life of Genesis and Revelation says will happen forever. Similarly, in the book of Psalms, the righteous are likened to trees planted by streams of water. And he will be like a tree firmly planted and fed by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season. Its leaf does not wither, and in whatever he does, he prospers, comes to maturity. Psalm chapter 1, verse 3, Amplified Bible. These texts stress the link between living a good life and being spiritually healthy and successful. The image of a tree planted by streams of water represents security, steady growth and productivity, all of which are traits of a life that is in line with God's will. This kind of life is strong and long-lasting, like the tree of life which lasts forever. Healing and Eternal Life The vision of Ezekiel also includes trees that bring healing and life. By the river on its bank, on one side and on the other, will grow all kinds of trees for food. Their leaves will not wither and their fruit will not fall. They will bear every month because their water flows from the sanctuary, and their fruit will be for food and their leaves for healing. Ezekiel chapter 47 verse 12, Amplified Bible This vision is like the tree of life in Revelation in that it shows healing and endless life. The tree's healing qualities and its ability to keep giving fruit are like the tree of life's promise of long-lasting provision and healing. This picture gives us more hope for a future where God's people will be completely healed and live forever in His presence. Reminder of Original Purpose The tree of life also reminds us of our bond with God and our original purpose on earth. It takes us back to the Garden of Eden where everything was perfect and Adam and Eve could talk to God directly. Adam and Eve lost access to this perfect connection because of sin. The divide caused by sin emphasizes how much was lost and how much we want to be reconciled and restored. But the promise of healing through Jesus Christ gives us hope. Jesus' death on the cross and resurrection made it possible for us to return to our original purpose, which was to live with God forever. 
The Bible keeps talking about this restoration to remind us of their final goal. The eschatological visions of Revelation clearly show this hope. The Tree of Life represents the full realization of God's plan to save the world. The Bible uses the Tree of Life as a strong metaphor over and over again. Its repeated appearance in the Bible shows that the story of creation, fall, salvation, and restoration is a continuous and logical one. It shows what God wants for us, how important wisdom is, the promise of healing, and the hope of endless life. We who believe are told to ask God for knowledge, live a good life, and hold on to the promise of eternal life. In this way, we line themselves with God's plans and enjoy the many benefits that come from having a close relationship with Him. As a representation of Christ, the Tree of Life tells us to think about our spiritual journey and to stay strong in our faith, looking forward to the new world where all of God's promises will be fulfilled. The Location of the Garden of Eden Many experts have different ideas about where the Garden of Eden might have been. The location of Eden is mysterious. The Bible gives us some hints, but we still don't know exactly where it is. Throughout history, different ideas and interpretations have been based on this mystery. We will look at what the Bible says and the different ideas about where Eden might have been. Theories of Location Now a river flowed out of Eden to water the garden and from there it divided and became four branching rivers. The first river is named Pishon. It flows around the entire land of Havilah, where there is gold. The gold of that land is good. Bedelium, a fragrant, valuable resin, and the onyx stone are found there. The second river is named Gihon. It flows around the entire land of Cush in Mesopotamia. The third river is named Hidekel, Tigris, it flows east of Assyria, and the fourth river is the Euphrates. Genesis chapter 2, verses 10 through 14, Amplified Bible. Several ideas have been put forward based on this description. Southern Mesopotamia. Some people think Eden was in southern Mesopotamia, close to where the Persian Gulf is now. The fact that the Tigris and Euphrates rivers were mentioned as important rivers in this area supports this idea. This idea points to the rivers Tigris and Euphrates that are talked about in Genesis. Some people think that the other two rivers, Pishon and Gihon, may have been branches that no longer exist or have changed their paths over thousands of years. Northern Mesopotamia Another idea is that Eden was in northern Mesopotamia close to where the Euphrates and Tigris rivers start. Parts of Turkey and Iraq are in this area, which is known for its fertile land and old cultures. Some scholars say that this area is a better match for what the Bible says it is because of where the two rivers meet and the proof of early human settlements. Some ideas say that the Garden of Eden might have been in places that are now underwater or have changed a lot over time because of natural events. Geological changes, like flooding in places that may have been above sea level in the past, are often a part of these ideas. Challenges in pinpointing location It's hard to say exactly where Eden is for a number of reasons. Geographical markers The Bible talks about rivers like Pishon and Gihon, but we don't know what their current names are. This makes it hard to connect these descriptions to specific places. River paths can change a lot over time, and some rivers may dry up or join with others. Historical Changes The changing climates, tectonic activity, and human activity in the area over thousands of years have changed the environment, making it harder to find where Eden first existed. The environment has been changed by the rise and fall of ancient rivers, the moving of tectonic plates, and the rise and fall of civilizations. Historical and Archaeological Considerations Different times and places in history have caused changes in the temperature and landscape of the ancient Near East, making it harder to find Eden. Changes in climate have turned places that used to be fertile into deserts and back again, 
and archaeological finds have given us clues, but not all the answers. Some people have tried to connect biblical accounts with archaeological sites, but there isn't enough proof to say for sure where anything happened. For example, everyone knows what the Tigris and Euphrates are, but no one knows for sure what the Pishon and Gihon are or where they flow. Archaeological digs in Mesopotamia and the surrounding areas have found ancient cities and civilizations that fit with some biblical stories, but none of them have positively named Eden. Even though these findings shed light on the background of ancient Near Eastern cultures, they have not yet pinpointed Eden's exact location. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you in awe and reverence, seeking your divine wisdom and guidance. As we ponder the mystery of the Tree of Life planted in the Garden of Eden, we are reminded of your infinite knowledge and the depth of your creation. Lord, we thank you for the gift of Scripture, which provides us with glimpses into the wonders of your design and the profound truths that shape our faith. Lord, the Tree of Life stands as a powerful symbol of your eternal provision and the promise of everlasting life. It represents the intimate relationship you desire to have with us, a relationship that was perfect and unbroken in Eden. As we think of its location, we are reminded of the beauty and harmony that existed in the beginning, a paradise where humanity walked with you in perfect fellowship. Father, we acknowledge that the exact geographical location of the Garden of Eden and the Tree of Life remains a mystery. Despite our curiosity and the many theories proposed, we recognize that some things are known only to you. We trust in your wisdom and your timing, knowing that all will be revealed according to your perfect plan. As we explore the various theories and interpretations, we ask for your guidance. Whether the garden was in southern Mesopotamia, near the headwaters of the Tigris and Euphrates, or in a place now hidden or transformed by time, we seek understanding not just in the physical sense, but in the spiritual truths these locations represent. May our quest for knowledge always lead us closer to you, the source of all wisdom. Lord, we are grateful for the clues provided in Genesis, which describe a river flowing out of Eden to water the garden and dividing into four branches. This imagery captivates our imagination and drives us to explore the lands of Havilah, Cush, and beyond. Yet, in our search, may we never lose sight of the greater significance of the Tree of Life. The Tree of Life symbolizes more than just a physical tree. It is a representation of your promise of eternal life and the spiritual nourishment you offer to all who believe. We see its significance echoed throughout Scripture, from Proverb, where wisdom is described as a tree of life, to Revelation, where the tree appears in the New Jerusalem, bearing fruit for the healing of the nations. Heavenly Father, we pray that as we reflect on the tree of life, we are reminded of our ultimate goal to restore our relationship with you through Jesus Christ. Just as Adam and Eve lost access to the tree of life through sin, we have been granted new access through the sacrifice of your Son. Jesus, the true vine, connects us to the eternal life that the tree of life represents. In our journey of faith, help us to seek wisdom and righteousness as described in Proverbs and Psalms. May we be like trees planted by streams of water, yielding fruit in its season and prospering in all we do. Let our lives be a testament to your sustaining grace and unending love. Lord, we also pray for healing and reconciliation in our world, just as the leaves of the tree of life are for the healing of the nations. We lift up those who are suffering, those who are in pain, and those who feel lost. May your healing touch reach them, restoring them to wholeness and peace. As we look forward to the fulfillment of your promise and revelation, where the tree of life stands in the new Jerusalem, we are filled with hope. We anticipate the day when every tear will be wiped away, when death and sorrow will be no more, and when we will dwell in your presence forever. Until that day, Father, 
strengthen our faith, and deepen our understanding. Help us to live in a manner that reflects the eternal life you have promised us. May we hold fast to the hope of restoration and the joy of eternal communion with you. We thank you, Lord, for the mysteries that draw us closer to you, for the revelation that teaches us truths, and for the promise of eternal life through Jesus Christ. May our lives be a reflection of your glory, and may we continually seek your presence, wisdom, and love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our question of the day. How have you been of help to someone this week? Put your answer in the comments below. Also, there are hidden truths about the Euphrates River that many people do not know. To watch that video, click here.